Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be painting the World One loading screen from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Each of the loading screens in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze are very, very brightly colored and I loved looking at absolutely all of them. So I thought I'd start with the first one and if there's more interest, I thought I'd continue painting them. But for the first one in the mangroves, um, I kind of did a sketch here and I laid out just kind of the top layer of where things are gonna go. There's a lot more layers to it than just kind of this background and then the black silhouette, but I wanted to make sure I knew where the most important part, which was the silhouette, was going. So I drew that in and then I kind of guessed on where my colors were gonna be and did little swatches here in color pencil. And then I did a swatch of how the colors are gonna fade between each other. It kind of starts with black at the top and gets into a dark blue and then into green and then into a yellow green. So the very first thing I need to do is this background. So what I'm gonna do is start mixing up my colors on my palette and then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put that gradient here on the canvas. I drew a line and so I can kind of see where the silhouette level is going to start because there's a bit of ground here and then there's the rest of the um, silhouette level. So what I need to do first with the background is I have some blue and I've used um, some primary blue and a little bit of titanium white and a little bit of ultramarine. I had picked the cyan because I wanted it to be a little bit more on the green side, but once I mixed the cyan with the titanium, I just didn't like it. It wasn't quite the right shade of blue, so I added some of the ultramarine to make it a bit cooler. So now that I have this, I'm going to kind of start this here, and then I'm going to work this down maybe to about here-ish, and that's when I'm going to start to pick up the green and bring the green into it. Now above the blue, it's going to sort of fade into black, but it's going to be a transition. It's not gonna be just a straight line. So I wanna make sure I kind of have the green first before I go into the black because it's gonna make my brush all dirty and I don't want any of that black paint getting down into the green. Then I'm gonna pick up some of the green and kind of come in down here and work it up into the blue. Then I'm going to take some black up at the top and start to work that down into the blue. Towards the bottom I'm just going to grab a little bit of white and kind of bring that up into the green just to make it a bit lighter down here. Going back to the sketch for a second, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mark in the silhouette layer with the chalk pastel, because if I don't do that, like the background layers might end up where I don't want them to go. I wanna know where the front one is, so I can kind of work around that and leave that empty for it. So I'm gonna mark it in with the chalk pastel first, and then I can go back to working on the other layers. Now for the most part, I've kind of roughly blocked this in. Like the trees aren't actually gonna be this shape up here for the leaves, but the trunks are where they're gonna be. And these are gonna be some bushes down here and it looks like a caterpillar right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the detail later because I know I'm probably gonna end up erasing some of that with my hand. So now the first layer I have, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that in separately. Now a lot of it's gonna get covered up by the other layers, so I'm gonna kind of pick a few spaces where I wanna make sure it definitely shows through and then fill it in. To fill this in, I've tried a few colors and I think I finally found something I like. So for my first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start to fill it in with this. Now what this is, it's some of this green with a little bit more blue and then I'm just adding a little bit of black for it. So every layer that I come forward from this one, this far away one, it's gonna have more blue and then more black all the way until it's gonna be a solid dark black for these foreground shapes. So with this little far away thing here, I'm just gonna kind of fill in the majority of it and kind of go into this bush a little bit too. But the edges are gonna kind of be these little like stick out pieces, they're kind of like leaves. So it's gonna kind of be bumpy on the edges. Kind of like this, like a little zigzag line all the way around. Now I'm not trying to make it a perfect zigzag line. Some of them are gonna stick out a little bit further and some of them are gonna be a little shorter. Some of them are gonna be a little wider, just so it has a little bit of variation to it so it looks more like nature. So after I fill in these three, then we'll start drawing in the next layer.
I finished that first layer, so it's time to start drawing in the second. Now every layer I have is going to sit on the ones below it. So if I do anything that overlaps any of these, they're going to be um, covering up this bottom layer, which is totally fine. They're far away, so they should get covered up. So I know my chalk isn't really showing up here, but um, it's going to kind of cover this one here. Moving on to the next layer, um, this one's going to kind of have a little bit of a background here where it kind of sits and has this other ground plane, um, but it's a little bit further back. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in first so I can see where it is, and then I'll work on the um, upper areas of this layer. On top of the ground layer for this color, I'm just kind of um, making a little bit of grass or leaves or something just so it's not a straight line because it's kind of boring. And then I'm just kind of going up into the rest of the shapes. I've drawn in the next layer and I know they're kind of getting hard to see, but I did a test over here to see if I could still see the carbon black paint I'm going to do for that front silhouette layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this last layer before the black and there's a few more um, things I have to do like down in here between the roots. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that and then I'll talk about the silhouette. I brought down some of the second to last layer because I thought there'd be too much of the solid silhouette black down here because it was going to cover this much. That's a lot of my canvas. So I brought down some of that second to last layer color and now I'm just bringing down the um, darker blue color, the last one before the black, because it's going to go over the top of this one but behind the black. So anywhere where I have this um, around the corner. Um, and then some of these little things in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bring that down um, to meet where it was, and then I can start doing the silhouette layer. Before I move on to the silhouette layer, I thought I'd take a second to talk about why I decided to paint these. Now, I've played all of the Donkey Kong Country games, um, one, two, and three, Returns and then Tropical Freeze and out of all of them I really really enjoyed Tropical Freeze because um, I really liked the innovation with it I liked how they brought kind of the modern aspects of gaming But still kept it feeling like Donkey Kong Country from the original games So I really loved these loading screens I thought they were all very beautiful the color choices and the way they interacted with each world they went with So that's kind of why I decided to do that now if you haven't seen it over on Steven plays I've done a full let's play of it with my husband Steven um, and we've done all the other Donkey Kong Country games if you're interested in that too. But um, for the silhouette layer, I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill in the major parts of it with this wider um, square brush. And then I'll pick up a fine detail brush and do some of the little details. This will get a lot more paint on it a lot faster and it'll kind of just go quicker. Just like this far away layer, I'm going to go ahead and kind of rough up the bottom part here just so it's not a smooth line all the way across. Some of these small finer lines I'm going to go ahead and use my paint marker for. And this is the same black I have, it's just a liquid form that I've put into this empty marker. So I'm going to kind of fill in some of these details that are super small.
I erased all the extra chalk on my canvas because there was quite a bit between all the trees and all the layers. And then I added some detail here on this vine just to make it look a little bit more complete so it wasn't just some random lines up there. The next thing I want to do is I need to address this somehow. And I had planned to put bushes here, but once I got this far I thought it would look really cool if I had Rambi and Donkey Kong on his back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fit them in here um, so I don't have to worry about remixing up this color. And I'm going to be doing them in silhouette form, even though I know this isn't a level where they are in silhouette. On the loading screen, um, Donkey Kong and who's ever playing with him um, kind of roll in full color. But I think it would match this a lot more if they were in silhouette. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch them in, trying to figure out how I can cover up this little space right here. I finished drawing in Donkey Kong and Rambi, and I'm really happy with how it turned out so I can start filling it in. And I'm going to be using a marker for that, um, just one of these paint markers I have. But I may have to switch to a brush for some of it because this is not the finest point of a marker, and the brush might just be a little bit finer and I can get some of those little tiny points. For the finer points, I'm just switching to this liquid carbon black. This is the same thing that's in the marker, and I had used the heavy body thick paint for the rest of it just to kind of fill it in because it goes a little bit further. But I'm switching to this in a super tiny brush for those fine details. Um, I think I might touch up the tail a little bit and the ears, so this will really help fill those in. While this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and change my name to the same blue color. So I've mixed up a little bit more and I'm just going to go right over the top. The next thing I want to do is start to draw in Donkey Kong's tie, so I'm just going to mark it in like I've done everything else and kind of decide if it looks good where I'm going to put it. To fill in this tie, I've mixed up kind of a darker red. I used some cadmium red and used some of like this greenish color to mix into it. Because green is opposite on the color wheel, it's going to tone that red down so it's not so bright and intense. So I thought this would match a lot better with what's on the canvas. And we're done! We have the loading screen from the first world of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print or a poster or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.